Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Forsgren. You may know me from the book Accelerate. I've spent the last several years helping teams and organizations make software better. Thanks everyone for joining us today. We are going to be talking about the space of developer productivity. So, it might seem straightforward, but it's a little more complex and nuanced than most people realize, and we've probably been doing it wrong for a long time. So today, we're gonna dig into the ins and the outs, some common misconceptions, some questions that a lot of people have. I'll also be giving you some tips and tricks at the end, some things to be thinking about. So, let's go ahead and talk about how we should actually be measuring developer productivity. And by the way, this framework can be used for a lot more than just developers. We can be using it for SREs. We can be using it for anyone who really makes things about technology and probably a lot more. So let's dig into it. So developer productivity doesn't just have to do with speed or output. There are a lot of different factors that affect it. That's why we developed the space framework. I was so lucky to work with several of my colleagues who many of us have been studying developer productivity for a decade or more. Don't be doing that math in your head, but we've been around for a while and we've been studying this for a long time. So it's the space framework. We called it space because there's a lot that goes into it. It also helps us remember it. So space, S is satisfaction and well-being. P is performance. A is activity. C is communication and collaboration, and E is efficiency and flow. So by thinking about all five dimensions of productivity and what's important here, it helps us have a more holistic understanding of what it means to make software. So we'll go into all of these in a bit. Now, why this really matters is because software really plays an important role in any organization's success. Understanding how, we can access, uh, sorry, understanding how we can assess and measure productivity of our developers gives us better insight into all of our organization's work processes, capabilities, and also our blind spots. This helps us understand how we can work more efficiently, make better software, and keep our developers happy. And as a developer, it makes sure that I can understand how I can develop and deliver software in a more healthy and sustainable way. It's really a win all around. So before we can really measure and even be predicting and thinking about developer productivity, we need to know what it is and also what it isn't, right? So there are five common myths and misconceptions about developer productivity that we'll be talking about today. We'll dig into each one of them a bit more, but let me give you a quick preview. First, productivity is just all about developer activity. Numbers, 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 counts, 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 lines of code, number of commits. No. Number two, productivity is only about individual performance. We know that's not true. It really is a team sport, but again, we'll talk about that. Number three, one productivity metric can tell you everything. Everyone wants the one metric that matters. Also, no. Okay, number four, productivity measures are only useful for managers. That's also not true because it can really help individual developers. So we'll also get to that. And then the last one that I'll talk about today at least is that productivity comes down to just tooling and engineering systems. So we'll debunk that one too. When we talk about productivity and only being about developer activity, this is the one I hear the very most out often, but really there's so much more there, right? And there are a few reasons why this just doesn't make sense, right? First. Sometimes developers have to work overtime to meet a schedule, and sometimes that schedule has been poorly set by someone else. Or sometimes we keep inconsistent hours because it's all about work-life balance and we're working around something that's outside of our control. I don't know about you, but this last year has really kind of insert some nonsense into our days and we're having flex schedules. Another one is that there are gaps in our data that we know are very, very common. So even straightforward metrics like pull requests just don't tell the whole story. Myth number two is that productivity is only about individual performance. Like I mentioned before, software really is a team sport. We really need to evaluate the success of someone both on their individual contributions and 
what their team is able to accomplish. If we only focus on an individual, they can very often just ignore team goals. Also, so much of what we're able to get done is very often inclusive and dependent upon things like individual work, glue work. How does the communication flow? So often we can't get our work done unless we can find a key piece of information or really understand what's happening behind the covers of the system. That's just impossible based on only one person. That's really why we really need to understand this balance and optimize for the whole team and the whole system. Now, another common myth is that there's one key metric that matters if I can just boil it down to one signal. But this also isn't true because we really need to know everything that's happening, right? Productivity is about a handful of dimensions that matter here, right? Communication, activity, flow. It's also about the context in which the work is done. How is the team working? What does our system look like? What is the architecture? What are the challenges that we're facing? So many things are different. And it's important to understand these because really the goal is to just do better. And are we doing better? So another myth is that productivity measures are only useful for, ma for managers. This may you know, come down to the fact that in some places and for a long time, managers have, have kind of misused a productivity metric. And sometimes productivity is a bad word. I say that if, it's, if we can, let's reclaim this word or find another one that we like, right? But whatever the reason for the myth, it's important to remember just that. It's a myth. Productivity can be really useful for so many of us. There's a lot of value in developers and individual contributors really understanding what helps us do better work more efficiently, more effectively, in ways that are more sustainable for ourselves, right? We know, and a lot of research has shown, that greater productivity leads to better satisfaction, a sense of better well being. Um, and I think that's wonderful, right? Tracking productivity can also help us communicate better with our team about what we need, what our blockers are, what, what help we need, what things we're looking for in our systems. I think that's great too. Okay, myth five is that productivity is just about engineering systems and developer tools. Listen, I agree, this is super important. How well our systems can support us and remove friction and help give us a superior developer experience is super important, but you know what? It's not the only thing. Our work environment, our context, how well we can communicate and collaborate, these are just as important, if not more, because when we think about it, how well we can work, when we think about removing friction, removing barriers, communication, that also helps us develop and deliver software in superior ways. So. The tooling's important, so is the process, so is the culture. So we'll get to this in a second. And when I say a second, I mean now. <laughs> so this is why we developed the space framework to really capture the different dimensions of productivity, help bust these common developer myths so we can really understand what productivity means. So let's take a closer look at each of these dimensions. So as I mentioned, there's five dimensions, satisfaction and well-being, performance, activity, communication and collaboration, efficiency and flow. We'll cover each of them in detail. First one, satisfaction and well-being. This really captures how fulfilled and happy developers are in their roles. There's a bunch of research here supporting the importance of this. We see that satisfaction and productivity are highly correlated. So it really is crucial to look at how developers are feeling in order to get a really good holistic understanding of productivity. By the way, this is where surveys come in handy, right? We can ask how developers are feeling in their roles and if they have the resources and tools necessary to do their work, right? You just can't capture some of this in, in tooling and in telemetry, right? It's, it's really important to pick up. Next up, performance. Now, this is the outcome of a system or a process. So how well did you get end-to-end -end through uh, a part of the system? So this could be things like reliability, uh, a quality metric, uh, customer satisfaction, speed through a system, 
Uh, it, it, it's how well something goes. But again, you don't want to look at it in, in binary terms. Is it only good? Is it only bad? So for example, a lot of code doesn't necessarily mean that it's good code. And high quality code doesn't necessarily satisfy customers. Features that improve customer satisfaction might not generate revenue. So many times when people ask me what a perfect performance metric is, the answer is it depends because it depends on what the goals of the company, the organization are. And by the way, even if this perfect code and high quality code satisfied your customers and maybe even generates revenue, not all developers get assigned impactful tasks. So everything depends here. Next up, activity. So often when we think about productivity, we immediately think about activity. Activity is a count. It's the number of things that get done. Lines of code, lines of code. Number of pushes, number of commits, number of pull requests. I do wanna mention, we're halfway through the framework and now we finally get to activity, right? So it's because activity is a valuable measure to look at, but it's not the only one. The activities that developers perform in their work are complex. They're diverse. There are so many things that we do. But remember, it's not the only thing that's important when we think about productivity. Next up, communication and collaboration. Now, this, think broadly. It's about how we communicate things in our systems. It's about how we find information. It's about how we share information. So yes, this can be about communicating with your team, which is super important. This can be about how we share information as well. So this can be documentation. This can be well-commented code. This can be findability, searchability, discoverability of code. When we think about successful open source projects, that's a key factor. When we think about inner sourcing, that's also a key factor, right? How discoverable is code? It can be tricky to quantify this. So again, sometimes we need to use surveys we need, or we need to just ask people, how well can you find and reuse code? How available are your team members? Are you still having one-on-ones? Because sometimes, I don't know about you, but this is true for me. Sometimes I just need to have a conversation. Sometimes something clicks. So that can be good too. The last dimension in the space productivity framework is efficiency and flow. And it might be my favorite because many times when we ask people if they've had a productive day, we'll talk about if I got into the flow, if I was able to just knock out work and get things done. This is what we're talking about when we talk about efficiency and flow. So there are a few ways to think about this. One is flow through the system. We could talk about number of handoffs. We can also talk about interruptions. There's lots of great research in the space that talks about the importance of this dimension, how fast things flow through the system, if we have interruptions, the timing of the system, how well all of this works, right? So it's a really good idea to take into account things that we can quantify and easily measure. So things like handoffs, quantity, timing, impact of interruptions, we can also think about things like total time, wait time, value added time. We also wanna be capturing things like perceptual data, things like how individuals and teams rate their ability to stay in the flow and complete their work easily. Here is a, an image, it's a good table. It's kind of a nice example of a bunch of the different types of metrics that can fit into each of these dimensions, each of the space dimensions. We've also shown that each of the metrics can be categorized as either individual level metrics, one person, team or group level metrics, when people work together, or system level metrics, kind of things that fit end to end through a system, right? So satisfaction with an engineering system would be an example of a satisfaction or well-being metric for an entire system, right, for your engineering system. Now, keep in mind though, <laughs> you don't need to account for every single dimension across every single level. We just include this so that you can see it's possible to kind of hit every, every dimension. There are examples that exist. Now, let's walk through a few examples. Here's one example that includes three dimensions. By the way, we do suggest that you try to capture at least three dimensions. So here's an example with S, C, and E satisfaction and well-being, communication and collaboration, and efficiency and flow. 
So in this example, we'll ask people for their satisfaction with the engineering system. Maybe you could proxy that with use of the engineering system, right? You might assume or imply that if people are using the engineering system, they're satisfied with it. It'd be better to ask though. Uh, for communication and collaboration, you could measure one-on-ones. You could ask people if they're doing one-on-ones. By the way, one-on-ones are a great use of time. And there is some data showing that higher use of one-on-ones is predictive of more time spent coding. So there you go, one-on-one -on -one time leads to other measures of productivity. Efficiency and flow, handoffs in the system and flow through the system. So this would be a good uh, kind of candidate set of measures to capture productivity. It's nice and it's balanced, right? Because we can kind of see how we have a few things that, that maybe won't throw off the system. Let's talk about another example. Here's one that captures S, A, and E. Satisfaction and well-being. Here we capture, again, satisfaction with the engineering system. I could see a scenario where an organization was curious if people were invested in the engineering system, if there were problems, if they wondered about friction. So this is a good thing to capture. Another one, activity, number of commits. This is a common one that's captured. And then efficiency and flow. Here, you could capture uh, lack of interruptions in coding time and flow through the system. So here, you could see where I could see, you know, chatting with someone saying, well, why, do, why would we want to capture these? Because you might wonder if the engineering system might be introducing friction or introducing delay. And so by looking at both number of commits and lack of interruptions in coding time and flow through the system, if these are balancing well, right? Are we really creating a supportive development environment? Are we contributing to a good developer experience? This balanced set of metrics would help give us insights to be able to answer this question. Now, here's another example. I like this example. Many times people say, well, I just care about code reviews. I just wanna ask about code review. What do you mean you care about code review? There are a lot of things that we can talk about when we talk about code review. So here's an example of code review that touches on all five of our space dimensions. Let's walk through it. So the first one is satisfaction with code reviews. This is important because it helps tell us if developers view their work and their participation in code reviews in a good or bad light. Do I feel like I'm being unfairly burdened with code reviews? Or do I feel like code reviews really contribute to the quality of my work and the quality of my team's work, right? Next is code review velocity. This can be measuring the speed of individual or even team code reviews. Are code reviews a blocker? Do they help me out, right? And this can be measured through, through uh, uh, system level metrics. Next is number of code reviews. How many code reviews is each person doing? How they're being spread across a team? Right? So this can help us understand uh, how code reviews are being kind of measured and how they're being balanced across the team. Next is communication and collaboration. What do we think about the quality and thoughtfulness of reviews? This is interesting because many times we will note that code reviews in and of themselves are a measure of communication and collaboration because we're talking about code. But you could take it one step further and you could ask people about the quality and the thoughtfulness of the reviews. Are they helpful? And then finally, we could look at code review timing. What does the impact of code reviews have on our flow and on our efficiency? Do they create interruptions? Am I getting pinged every 30 minutes, every hour? Or is it fine, right? Does it not impact my work? Are they showing up in bunches? Do I do them in the morning? Do I do them at night? So we can see the impact of code reviews on our work. There's another example. So the space framework, as I mentioned before, isn't something like a bingo card where we have to hit every single block in order for it to work well. The guidance that we're giving is that you should strive to use at least three dimensions and think about how they balance each other out. Because what's important is that we don't throw off the balance because then we can have unintended consequences in our systems. Okay, now let's cover the things to watch for when we're using the framework. Anytime we measure things, we want to be careful about unintended consequences and what happens when we use numbers, when we use measures. Space framework is no exception. So 
the first thing we want to watch for are the types of metrics that we use or how many we're using. Anytime we overwhelm people with numbers, it can be too much. We can get analysis paralysis or we could just give up and walk away. This will be true for developers. This will be true for managers. That's also why I pointed out earlier, we don't need to treat this like a bingo card to, to fill in every single possible square. Let's pick a few, let's make it reasonable, and let's think about balance and making it holistic, right? Also keep in mind that not all data is 100% reliable. Much of our telemetry will have gaps. Some data isn't a perfect proxy. For example, when we think about uh, retention, right? Retention doesn't necessarily map to satisfaction. Sometimes people will leave teams for a great opportunity. Sometimes they'll leave teams for a money boost. They might leave teams because their partner has a good opportunity somewhere else and they need to move. So it's just not a perfect proxy. Another factor that we really wanna keep in mind is developer privacy. We should always respect privacy by reporting only anonymized aggregated results at the team or group level. Finally, we should also consider how biases and norms might affect our data. Peer review and gender bias in particular are extremely common. A lot of research shows that women are more likely to receive negative comments and they're less likely to receive positive comments in their code reviews. So make sure that you keep that in mind. We should also be careful about the methods that we use to normalize time, especially across long periods. So one example that we see very often is that when we look at metrics over a year, this would bias against developers that, that take time off for parental leave. Now, uh, let's also rethink developer productivity, right? We've seen how all of these measures come together and can help us think about a more holistic measure that goes well beyond some of the things that we're probably used to saying. It's about so much more than just an individual's activity levels or the efficiency levels of an engineering system. It comes down to many complex factors that work together. They work together to help individuals and teams do better work in more sustainable ways and do it in balanced ways that don't throw off the system. Using the framework is a way to measure these factors in a way that is easy and reliable and helps us think about what these trade-offs are in measurement. Not only does using the framework give us a rational, comprehensive way of looking at our system and our measures, it also helps us solve problems so that we can create a greater impact with our work. Now, how the space framework can help you. Think about how, how you could use it in your own organization. So we wanna be linking these metrics to organizational goals because it's not just about individual activity measures. It's not just about the efficiency of the systems or the tools. It's how we can achieve our goals. It really is about the outcomes that are important, right? Think about what it means for invisible work. Think about how we can help surface the invisible work and the importance of it. What else do we think about here, right? Satisfaction and well-being, things like communication and collaboration. It can help us identify problems and gaps in our process, and it can really help us communicate the greater impact that we are making. Now, this also means, again, these stronger successful outcomes, smarter work processes, faster improved collaboration, happier developers, more sustainable, more resilient processes, most importantly, better software, and more satisfied customers. Now, why is that? Because in the performance metric, in the performance dimension in particular, we're thinking about outcomes and which outcomes are most important. And when developers are more able to see and understand what it means in this holistic measure of productivity, we prioritize these types of outcomes. Thanks so much everyone for joining. We will have time for questions.